Many of you want to hate on Skull and Bones because you've heard about it for seven years. But the open beta actually proves it could provide a quality experience, if it's the kind of game you're looking for. You're probably expecting something it's not even trying to be. More on that soon. You'd also be hard-pressed to find an alternative game in this genre that's trying to do what Ubisoft's, yes, fully-priced $60 to $70 Open Seas Naval Combat RPG is trying to do. And with the amount of detail, shared world co-op, and PvP it's aiming for, there seemingly isn't a current one-to-one -one competitor. I know you're saying, but Sea of Thieves! However, the gameplay focus and style is quite different here. In Skull and Bones, you are the ship more than you are the pirate. It's about equipping your ship with a flamethrower and a shotgun-style cannon with status effects on them, or building a support tank that can even heal. Disclaimer, this is just a preview opinion based on a big open beta. Big questions remain. Disclaimer number two, I played this on PC with max settings, so yeah, it looks solid. Console seems decent for how open the world is, but you may have to deal with some draw-in and pop-in. As long as that doesn't affect the battles in crossplay, it will most likely just serve as an annoyance for some. So, what is Skull and Bones? I've probably spent over 15 hours in the not yet charted beta waters. Before I describe its aims, let's lay out the biggest unknowns and questions. Once you get past the initial grind, how varied and enjoyable is the naval combat? Can you enjoy the game if you just follow the main quests and ignore the crafting, building a fleet of ships, etc.? If you don't play co-op or PvP, will you feel shortchanged? How big is the map, really, once you've explored it? How well do shared world co-op events and PvP battles work at full scale? What's included in the full game versus its announced four seasons of future content? What is the true end game? Does Skull and Bones have sea legs or do you just run out of things to do after 40 hours? With that out of the way, here's the skinny on the gameplay so far. Skull and Bones is heavily inspired by MMORPGs and Construct, except you really are the ship and the open world is its waters. Yes, it has small cities and encampments that you can explore on foot, but all you'll be doing is talking to vendors, finding quests to take up, and probably crafting. Lots of crafting. To be more clear, it is not about swinging swords and shooting guns as Pistol Pete the Pirate. It's no surprise that because Ubisoft made a game that evolved out of Assassin's Creed Black Flag, that players want more of that. But it is not that game. They should have called this game Ships and Cannons because most of the commentary I've heard is focused on the idea of the game that many wanted, not what Skull and Bones has become. So is it any fun? Well, yeah, it's enjoyable. I can't say where it goes yet, though, and it's a matter of how the game's demand for grinding for basic upgrades and exploring ends up paying off. It's a very RPG vibe, though. I probably spent 200 hours crafting in the MMORPG New World, so none of that surprised me. That means taking up quests to earn money, get ship parts, and crafting materials. Sometimes you're just slowly cruising between coasts and enjoying real-time changes in weather, daylight, you know, the waves, etc. And at other times, or if you choose, you can chase the many non-player AI ships into battles. You can play solo and you don't have to engage in PvP at all. In fact, a lot of questions remain about what is PvP in this game anyway? You do see other players sailing the seas in the shared world or in town to admire or laugh at their outfits. You can of course invite them to play or chat even. It shares a similar construct to a game like Diablo 4 in that way. Again, it's like an MMORPG, but it is not a dedicated server with like hundreds of players. It's a shared world where people just cross over into each other's territories. So, while you can play with two other players for a total of three co-op, the world has events that many will join up for to take down a big AI enemy fleet or to smuggle away items as the PvP target. Again, it remains to be seen how much quantity and variety there is here at depth. The ship controls, by the way, will strike you as odd at first. Think of it as a race car in gear. The wind does affect your speed, but you basically are sails down, stopped, slow, or boosting, which uses a stamina gauge. The RPG vibe plays in heavily here, as you can even cook all sorts of recipes to buff your crew, your ship recovery status, etc. It's clear to me this is going to be all about the depth, or their lack of, in combat. Does this feel intuitive and fun in repeated combat? 
uh, that then has to track alongside all this strategical use of where you place the guns around your ship. We'll see. At a base, it feels okay, but it does feel half clunky and half, dang, I kind of suck at this and need to get better. As mentioned, there's a lot of build variety to come to grips with. Cannons, torpedoes, flamethrowers, long guns, mortars, and more. The status effects like tearing sails are in here, flooding ships, or even healing. This is where it remains to be seen how it feels and plays in the long run. Similarly, we don't know how much microtransactions are going to be in it, how much is up with the store, and what the battle pass is all about. Things that could easily sour the game if it feels withheld from those that have already spent 60 or 90 bucks. Importantly, there has to be a ton of cool stuff in the game. I was happy with the slow grind pace of making your ship and pirate look better, but I do not want to see a bunch of people buying endgame cosmetics immediately without having worked for it, or seeing only the best design stuff in the store and not in the full price game. There's a lot more to say and see, and for that, you can probably catch me live on Twitch TV slash FM3 underscore. I'm looking forward to more, but I'm most worried if it will be too much of a grind to accomplish anything and that it won't be easy enough to get into co-op and PvP events without getting obliterated or the usual technical flubs that you might face in a game like this. I'd be happy if I could spend 40 to 50 hours and get into the end game depth for a while, the depth of combat, but not have to grind endlessly and to craft endlessly as so many live service style games are trying to do, uh, which usually are trying to get you into the store or the battle pass or whatever. But again, I'm paying full price for this game. I'm hoping I can just play it as that. If this helps you out, drop a like or a comment. And if you play, Definitely chime in and let us know what you're thinking.